welcome back to my channel i am deep as messy in case you don't already know and in this video i'm going to be making this gorgeous wig i have on it's a knotless frontal braided wig all right i'm super excited about this one guys like you actually get to save your coins making this wig like it's amazing because it's a frontal wig that we're going to ventilate by ourselves we're going to do the whole ventilation i'm going to show you how to do that how to get it to fit your head perfectly and everything you need to know to make yours at home if that's something you're interested in then make sure to keep on watching love you Mwah. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my dung cap and just put that on my canvas head. We want to make sure that it's well arranged and securely pinned down. Then I'm just going to map out where I'm going to put my lace net. I'm going to be using the lace net of 13 by 5. That's going to be my measurement. So I'm going to first of all measure that 13, which is the front. So I'm going to be pinning the 6.5 to the middle of the canvas head and then just map it out on my done cap so i marked that 6.5 on one end then at the other end marked it at 13 inches so you see what i did there so i get my 13 inches then from the front to the back i'm just going to mark out where my five inches stop so that's literally giving me a 13 by 5 map out for where i'm going to place my lace net so i'm just going to map that out to let the lines get to each other to let them meet at a point and just map it out so it's very easy for me when i want to place my lace net so i'm just going to go ahead and place my lace net so you can either use this lace net or you just buy a frontal lace net that is already cut out and sewn as a frontal so whichever one works for you whichever one you are you have access to and whichever one you want to use but both of them work very well so i'm just going to go ahead and start pinning this down you want to actually take your time in doing this step because this can actually make or break your wig throughout this process so you want to actually take your time doing this process the goal here is to have this as flat as possible and to remove as much creasing as we can so all right so what i do for me i actually go in with big gaps and pin it down then after I'm done pinning it from one edge to another, then I start going in little by little and removing the creases as I'm going. So this is what it's looking like. I've actually gone ahead to remove as much crease as I can. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and start cutting off the excess lace I have. So you should have something like this when you're done. So I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing that down securely with my needle and thread. If I was doing this for someone, I would actually do this process on a sewing machine because it's actually a lot more neater when you do it on a sewing machine. But anyone works actually. But this is what I'm doing. I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing. And you don't remove the pin until you get to that point. Okay, so you just sew very slowly and slowly and then remove the pin as you get closer to that point basically. So I just go ahead to do that for the other side as well. I just go ahead to sew both sides to meet at the middle. All right, so th that's all I just do for placing the lace net. Then you want to go ahead to cut off the excess lace, but you don't want to cut off too much that will actually have it loosen up. You don't want what you've done to start losing. So you just want to cut off moderately enough. So now I have excess wig cap. I'm going to sew that in. So I'm sewing that in because I've actually gone ahead to use my head measurement in placing the dung cap. If you want to see a very detailed how I prep my wig cap for braiding or for anything, if you want to just see how I prep my wig cap, a very detailed one, let me know down below in the comment section. Section, all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and place my measuring tape as you can see and then i'm just gonna mark on every inch this just gives me a guideline on where to place my braid so you kind of just want to follow that line and just place your braid i'm going to show you later on what i mean by that so that is it for prepping our wig cap so now we're going to go into making the wig i'm going to be using these two extensions i'm going to be using the 27 and 30 i'm just going to go ahead and you know kind of blend them together all right just a little something and then just brush it out so this is how it came out this is how it's looking so i've already gone ahead to start braiding so you see i just followed that line as a guideline 
those dots I marked on earlier on. I just followed it as a guideline. So now I'm going to show you how I actually braid on the wig cap. So I'm just going to take my crochet pin and then just pass that through the wig cap. And then just take a little portion of the extension. You don't want to take too much because too much can actually tear the wig cap. Alright, so I just actually do this by row. I kind of just do it because it's kind of easier to just kind of fill in that line once by crochet. And then I come in and take a bigger piece of extension depending on the size I'm going for, depending on the size of the hair. And then I just braid as normal. If you watch my other videos, I think this step is very explanatory. If you watch my other videos, you see me do this a lot. So I didn't really go detailed into it because I've done this a lot. And it's actually very self-explanatory. So all you have to do is just watch out for the size and just make sure your size are kind of the same. So that's it really. So next thing you want to do is cover that lace you've done. You want to cover the excess lace. You don't want it showing. I'm just going to put my crochet pin through the net and through the wig cap and just kind of drag it in and do exactly the same thing i did before kind of just braid the top of the lace net so it doesn't show and when you want to do this you want to make sure it's a lot more closer than what i'm doing right now i'm going to show you in a bit what i mean by it being a lot more closer because you want it to cover the wig cap you don't want the wig cap showing so i'm just going to go ahead and braid as normal like i would normally do I'm tired of the pain Go away I'm just gonna head to fill that up so like I said, you don't want them to be spaced between your braids because that's not going to do a very good job of covering the lace and covering your wig cap. So you want to make sure there are minimal space in between your braids. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the excess wig cap because we're not going to be using it. I'm just going to go ahead to get rid of it. You want to actually do this very slowly and take your time. You don't want to end up cutting the lace net you've actually put on already. So you just want to take your time and just cut it off. And you don't have to cut it off so low that it ends up start losing. So just cut off moderately and that's it really. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the wig back on my canvas head and then actually place that where I'm pinning it well. You need this to be placed well before you do this process, alright, because this is the process of the ventilating and before you do the ventilating, you want to make sure it's properly well fitted and seated on your canvas head, alright. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the powder method for my lace net why because i want it to be very visible while i'm crocheting or rather ventilating because if it's not visible it's going to take you a lot of time if you're not seeing what you're doing is it that you use this method or you use a tape or you use a colored canvas head for me i just use the powdered method all right so i'm just going to take my pencil you could take any pencil you have or anything you want to use or you could use a concealer and a brush that works too so I'm just going to go ahead and mark my middle part and then I'm just going to go ahead and just draw my hairline kind of just a guideline really what I'm drawing is actually really a guideline and you actually want to do this especially if it's your first time doing the front out before you kind of just get accustomed with how it feels and how it goes you actually just want to give yourself a guideline of where you want to place everything and how everything is going to be So after I'm done mapping out my hairline, the next thing I'm going to map out is the columns, where and how wide I want my columns to be. For this column, I'm going to be going for one inch column, kind of just what I was feeling and how wide I wanted it to be. I didn't think anything smaller than this would have made sense. 
so after marking that i'm just going to draw that down just because that's the whole column and just so after i'm done marking that i'm just going to go ahead and just draw the line downwards to just kind of map out the column like i said and once i'm done with marking out the column i'm going to mark out how wide i want my row to be you're kind of going to get the idea it's kind of just forming a box for your braids it's kind of just making a box braid and i actually think someone can go ahead to make a triangle kind of setting too let me know what you think about that but yeah it's just kind of mapping out a box that i'm going to braid on later on. so another thing you're going to need for the ventilation process are your short black extension and you're also going to need your crochet pin or your ventilating needle this is the one i use and it's amazing guys i'm gonna link it down below i've already gone ahead to do one half of the canvas head you can see the boxes i was talking about that we're going to braid on so i'm going to show you how i make these boxes first things first you want to start from the back right because it's just more easier and it's more i don't know how to explain it but i find that starting out from the back actually helps you a lot so now i'm just going to show you how i make a box basically so what i do for the outer layer the first thing i do is i take the extension i take two to three strands of extension because you don't want the knot on the outer part to be too big because that's visible so you actually just want to go ahead with very tiny pieces you kind of just want to watch and see what i'm doing kind of because what i'm doing is actually very explanatory i'm just kind of crocheting like i would normally do this is not a ventilating thing so if you're having trouble with ventilating and you want to try ventilating you can go ahead and use this pin it's a crochet pin that is very small and can go through your net without cutting it so i'm just going to do a second line for that box so this one is inside the first line so it can be two to three for this one or three to four but you don't want to make it so big a knot to because it's still going to be visible from the outside when it comes to the third line you can actually go in with five to six strands of hair or i don't know if that's understandable so basically it's not like i ventilate the whole inside of the box i just ventilate three lines side side forward and backwards if you know what i mean i don't ventilate the whole box per se i find out that just ventilating those three lines on each side it works perfectly and it looks amazing so i'm sorry the camera is a bit shaky i was using my phone camera and my sister had to hold it basically so i just want to get a more clearer view because the camera wasn't actually catching it like that so if it's shaky i'm sorry but i just wanted you to have a very clearer view of what was going on and how i ventilate so this is what i mean by ventilating three lines from side side and front and back you can see how it looks basically all right so that's it really for ventilating a box that's all i do then i just go ahead to bridge it off to just get it out of the way and start ventilating the next box so one thing i forgot to mention is you want to make sure your boxes are as identical as possible you don't want one looking bigger than the others or one looking smaller than the others and mostly when it comes to the front where people can see if it's at the side closer to your ear it doesn't really matter per se but once it's the front or the middle of the ventilation where people can see you want to make sure it's as identical as possible so yeah i'm just showing you how i ventilate really so i ventilate on one line give a space ventilate on the other line give a space you know how you don't have hair everywhere in your head i don't know how to make it make sense but it just kind of give it that very clocked look at the same time and also give it a very flawless finish I've been stuck on my memory But it's not like I need it And you may have some history But we don't have to repeat it You made this mess and left me with the pieces 
lovelies i'm gonna have to break the rest of the fronter off camera i'm just gonna break this one on camera basically what i like to do when braiding i like a not left braid actually when it comes to frontal or closures because it just gives it this flow i don't really like the boss braid kind of feeling all right so what i just do is i take a comb a take comb and just dip that in my shine and jam i either use a shine and jam or i use a mousse for this process both of them i find that it works perfectly for me so i'm just going to use that shine and jam i'm using the tail of the comb because i want to distribute that gel as little and as evenly as i can because you don't want it to be too much especially when you're using shine and jam because shine and jam gets very sticky actually so you want to just distributed very little and i just felt using my hand to just kind of overpower the hair so i'm going to go in start and start braiding right now so before you start braiding for knockless you want to make sure you have your extension out already that you're going to be using to braid basically all right so i just went ahead to cut the extension out that's what you can see on the mannequin head all right so i'm just going to go ahead and braid as normal it's very explanatory, you can watch what I'm doing. So after braiding, the next thing you want to go ahead to do, after you're done braiding everything, you want to go ahead and trim. This just gives it a more neater look. It's actually very essential. I actually recommend you do this process one by one, actually. Trim them one by one. The next thing I'm going to do is just ventilate my edges, all right? So I looked at the wig and I'm like, this wig is not going to com be complete without any edges on it. So I just went in and just did my edges the way I would want it to be on me, really. And it came out actually gorgeous if you ask me. I really liked where I placed my edges. So basically it's what you want and what you like. So you can go ahead to ventilate it anywhere you want to. If you want it fully on the on the whole front line, you can go ahead to do that. But I kind of was making my own hairline and kind of just went for like on the edges and it was really nice actually so whatever works for you really works for you so this is what i ended up with this is what i ended up ventilating all right, I just felt a little swoop at the side. Just two little swoop at the side would be enough for me. Let me know what kind of edges you would love to ventilate on this. For me, this too was just very enough. So I'm just showing you how everything came out and how it's looking, basically. And I'm really impressed, guys. I mean, you can't tell this was ventilated. So after that, I just go ahead to put the hair in hot water. Very important. I don't know why I don't have a clip of that. But I just go ahead, put the hair in hot water, and then put, apply my mousse. And now I'm just going to cut out the edges we've already done. I just kind of like cutting it out before I lay it on. Because it's just more easier for me. I don't know, any one is good. You can do it while you're laying it. Or you can do it on your canvas head, whichever one works for you. But I'm just kind of thinning it out. So 
so i just kind of go in with my moves and just see how i want it to be and if there's need for extra trimming i trim then after applying with the mousse because that's going to make it flat and it lets you see the vision you're kind of going for so this is what it's looking like it doesn't mean you won't trim it when you're laying it but this kind of just gives the it gives the vibe before you lay it on all right so now i'm going to be installing the wig you can tell i'm pretty excited so it's my first time actually trying the board cap method i actually just want to see how it will look all right i just really wanted to see so it's not really a detailed install per se but yeah that's all i'm just going to spray with my got to be spray and then dry on cool setting and then just cut the extra wig cap off Then I'm going to apply foundation to the board cap. I mean, I don't know how to do a good board cap, guys. Let me know how I can perfect this in my next video. Let me know what I can do to perfect my board cap method. But for now, we just kind of did a little something something. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply foundation to my wig cap. Very essential. You don't want to put that wig cap while it's looking white all right so this is it guys tell me it's giving scalp it's giving scalp and it's giving what it's supposed to give all right so i just went ahead to lay it most of the clips i actually did it off camera because i needed both hands to do it So this is what most of the clips when I was laying it looked like. I just had my sister hold the mirror for me because I needed both hands to actually work with this wig and lay it absolutely perfect. But one thing I always do when laying my front out is I take it by section. So I spray a side and just tie it, wait a few minutes, spray the other side and tie it. That's what I mean by going little by little. And that works for me every time. I went ahead to do my edges and just lay that wig as best as I could. Alright, let me know what you think about my laying skills down below. But this is what it's looking like. I was super impressed with it to say the least. So I'm just going to go on and dab some powder and that's really it guys. It came out so beautiful, so beautiful and it's giving scalp very important so lovelies we're done installing the wig this is how it came out i'm super impressed to say the least it came out really gorgeous and i love this color combo i really really love the color combo there's just something it's doing to my skin i mean i mean i mean it's so pretty if you like this video you might actually like the previous one where i actually made the ventilation of a closure wig instead of a frontal in case you want to you're a beginner if you're a beginner, I would not actually advise you go in straight for frontal do a closure be it a bigger closure maybe a five by five closure just go from small then try and progress it to a frontal then if you know what I mean all right because going for a frontal might just you might get really tired having to ventilate if you're a beginner right but if you've done this then a front i mean go for it go for it at once it's super easy it's super doable if i can do it you can do it because i'm actually a very lazy braider you might not know that but i'm actually a very lazy braider i'm lazy when it comes to braiding all right so that's it pretty much for this video i really hope you enjoyed it let me know your favorite part down below in the comment section let me know if you have any question also in the comment section make sure to give this video a thumbs up it's gonna help the video do so much better and it's gonna help it get to a lot of more people so they could see how to save coins and achieve this I mean you get to save a lot of bucks a lot of money to achieve this all right so let me know anything in the comment section i'll be sure to get to it thank you so much for watching till the end of this video guys and if you watch in the end of this video you already know you're the what you already know you're the real mvp thank you so much and i'll see you in my next week video love you bye